Greetings fellow tank commanders. In this video I'm going to be showing you a game that I played, the TOG 2. This is a tier 6 premium British heavy tank, which plays up to tier 7. The game I'm playing is on fjords in a standard battle, with tier 7 as the top tier, and no artillery. For this game, my TOG 2 is equipped with an enhanced gun laying drive, a gun rammer, and a super heavy small liner. Since this tank has such good silver earning potential, I have supplied mine with a large repair kit, large first aid kit, and an automatic fire extinguisher. For my ammunition loadout, I have 104 AP rounds, 20 APCR rounds, and 20 HE rounds. The crew I'm using for this game is my best British crew, and it's from my FV215B183, also known as the Death Star. The commander has 10 crew skills and perks. They are Mentor, Brothers in Arms, Sixth Sense, Repairs, Camouflage, Snapshot, Smooth Ride, Silent Driving, Controlled Impact, and Eagle Eye, and is currently working on situational awareness. The TOG 2 is currently 20% off on World of Tanks console for November 17th's Premium Tank Sale of the Day. Now since the TOG 2 is so slow, it's a really good idea to have a strategy so that you don't waste time trying to reposition in a tank that really can't reposition. Once you commit to an area of the map, you're pretty much stuck there all game. The TOG 2 simply just doesn't have the mobility to make course corrections more than once or twice a game. Since there are no artillery, I have selected this area in the middle of the map to fight in. The ground here is flat, and you can usually find a few enemy tanks trying to push through here. Otherwise, it's easy to move forward and shoot at either the left or the right flank. In my experience, there's usually at least two enemy tanks trying to push through the city towards this middle road. So I am going to wait here and set an ambush. Every second I wait, though, is painful, because I know how long it takes to get the TOG into battle if the enemy does not confront you directly. With this in mind, I decide to push forward and see if I can get some shots in on that Craft Panther. My teammate Tank Destroyer has a similar idea, and it's always nice having a little support from your teammates. There is of course the chance that there are some enemies still hidden in the city, and that others are slightly off to the left. I think by now though they would have already made themselves visible, otherwise they're just going to continue waiting there, so it's worth the risk to move forward. The Craft Panther is nice enough to drive in my path, I'm able to track him, and my teammate gets to finish him off. My teammates on the right flank are now fighting an Oni, Japanese tier 7 heavy tank which is at full health, and a one-shottable type 58. I know my teammates will appreciate having some help fighting this Oni, since it can be a little challenging fighting that tank from the front. Unfortunately my teammate Jagdpanzer gets a little too excited and overextends and makes an easy target for the heavy tank. I'm on APCR shells right now to fight this heavy tank. This ended up being quite unnecessary since I was shooting at the back of him and he was focused more on my teammates rather than me, so I was able to line up my shots quite easily and so AP shells would have been able to penetrate him no problem. I get 6 damage hits in here and I'm able to pick up my first kill. The Type 58 is easily handled by my teammates. And now that there are no more targets, I'm going to drive down the center of the map along this road. I would have liked to have gotten some shots in on this hammer. However, my first shot to try and track him misses, and my other speculative shots do not find their target either. With the hammer gone, it's now time to move forward and try to find some more targets. My team has a comfortable lead right now, and the left flank seems to be holding up all right and I wouldn't consider climbing up the uneven terrain there to try to help out anyways, because it would pretty much take me the rest of the game to get there. There are at least a few enemies defending their base, so I decide to help my team push through here. Now it's time for a bit of a boring drive here. As a TOG driver, you have to be comfortable with the possibility of missing out on a lot of good opportunities, because your tank's simply too slow to reach them in time. This is especially noticeable in the late game when your teammates tend to open up some distance from you. I find the TOG an extremely fun tank to play and it's one of my favorite tanks in the garage. You have to be extremely patient when you're playing the TOG 
and therefore it's not really a game style which everyone will enjoy. But if you're fine with a slow moving tank with no reliable armor, then you'll probably enjoy the epic highs and the sad lows that you get when you play the TOG 2. I'm able to track the Tiger P and get a damage hit on him before my teammates finish him off. Now I get an opportunity to shoot the hammer. Unfortunately, I only get one damage hit before he reaches cover. You'll notice that this game has made quite a turnaround, and our huge four tank advantage has dropped to only one. And four of the five remaining tanks on the enemy team are tier seven. At the moment, this game could go either way. My teammates are sandwiching that hammer, so I focus on the newly arrived German tank destroyer. My first shot does not go through, but my second one does, and I get to bounce a shot as well, which is not a common sight in the top two. The game is still very close, and I am definitely worried about that J Panther up there, which is near full health. We know that the remaining enemy Tiger is on the other side of the map, but the T20 is unaccounted for. With the game being so close, and since I don't have any speed to go chase these enemies down, it's time to put some pressure on the enemy team and start capturing the base. The J Panther can be a tough target to fight sometimes, so I'm on APCR rounds because I don't want to bounce any unnecessary shots since the game is so close. Our friendly Tiger tank is going up the hill. It looks as if our Hammer tank is going to be covering our rear, and I am going to head over to the water area here in case the J Panther slid down to try to get a sneak attack in on us. The Tiger has now engaged the J Panther and I am able to get a quick snapshot in on him. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get another shot in through the tree that's in front of me. The game has now completely turned around and the enemy has a one tank advantage. I have no intention of actually winning this game by base capture. I don't play the TOG 2 for winning games, I play it for maximum fun. The base capturing is just to put some pressure on the enemies to draw them in. And the enemy team hasn't even started capturing our base yet, so I'm not worried about losing from base capture since we already have over half the base points we need. I get an opportunity for a quick side shot on the J Panther here, but we now know he's coming to try to reset the base. I was rolling back into the base because if we were going to win by base capture, I wanted the points, but I roll out now that the J Panther has come to fight. We get a nasty surprise here though when the T20 comes out just at the last second and manages to reset the base. Now a lot of credit needs to be given to this T20 here. He does an excellent job at using my hammer teammate to block me from getting a shot in on him. Now this is a real mess, I'm trying to follow the T20 while leading him around my friendly hammer tank. My ammunition rack got hit from the J Panther shot, and I immediately used my repair kit on him. This was absolutely necessary since I'm going to now have to fight three tier 7 tanks. I think the T20 was getting a little overconfident there and he underestimated the rate of fire and damage potential of the TOG 2. My friendly hammer tank had done a great job at weakening the J Panther, and I managed to finish him off with another shot. There's no way I would ever be able to get back to my base in time if the enemy Tiger tank started capturing, so I'm going to force him to come to me. The last time I saw him, he was more towards the right flank, so I'm anticipating that he's going to come this way. I am still on APCR shells. I only have two left, though. I use the destroyed J Panther as cover to block at least one direction that he could come from. I have 20 damage hits here so far, and I managed to destroy 4 enemy tanks, but there is no potential for a top gun. This has been quite an epic final stand so far, and I'm really hoping that the Tiger tank comes and fights me before I manage to capture the base. That would be a really boring way to end this game. It looks like I was wrong and the Tiger tank is coming from the left flank. I rush my first shot and it goes into the ground. I am extremely relieved that the enemy Tiger tank is not fully upgraded because he would have had the option to trade shots with me which could have led to a very different outcome. 
And that's it. I'm able to destroy all three of the remaining tier 7 tanks with my trusty Tog 2. In this game, I was able to earn almost 20,000 silver, despite using a large amount of APCR shells and using a large repair kit. I managed to earn 5,798 experience with a 50% multiplier from an AWP. It's unfortunate that I didn't earn any epic medals this game despite having such an epic comeback, but I managed to get a Mastery Badge Ace Tanker. In this game, I managed to destroy 5 enemy tanks, get 2,953 damage, and 917 assisted damage. I placed at the top of my team and earned a base XP of 2,147. I managed to hit 25 of my 35 shots and penetrate 22 of those. In this game, I managed to destroy three enemy tracks. I destroyed the engine in the Jagdpanzer IV, damaged the engine in the ARL V39, and injured the driver in the Tiger. Well, there it is, the incredible damage potential of the TOG-2. Slow and steady may not always win the race in World of Tanks, but with the TOG-2, you definitely have a chance. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it'll help you play your own TOG-2. Stay tuned for more awesome World of Tanks games.